Welcome back to the Mina Kime Show featuring Lenny, the only NFL podcast where one of the hosts thinks stuffing is what you rip out of a toy. That's Lenny. I'm Mina Kimes. Speaking of things getting ripped out, Nick Wright, his heart was taken from his chest last night. More my money or my wallet. I, uh, I, that, you know, the losses happen in the NFL, but I don't always gamble as if they do. And so, yeah, but hi, Mina. This is, you know, I was very honored when I was invited on the Mina Kime show featuring Lenny. I was a little hurt that it had taken, you know, <laughs> six years, but it's fine. Uh, I was very honored to be invited. And I was so excited about the timing of it because I'm like, oh, we'll be able to talk about how the Chiefs are clearly the best team in the world after they beat the Eagles. And now instead, I'm just talking to you about the Chiefs loss, which is a little disappointing. But thank you for having me on all the same. You're not only talking to me about the Chiefs loss. We're also talking about the Eagles uh, triumphant win. And we are going to talk a little bit about the Thanksgiving games in the second half of this podcast. So a little bit of housekeeping. That is not Dominique Foxworth. That is Nick Wright uh, playing the role of Dominique. You know, Dominique usually is on with me during Tuesdays. It's, it's, it's big shoes to fill. I, I was going to say, yeah. I don't know that I can play the role of Dominique. I can do my best, but I would a much slower 40 time. But I, you know, it, uh, probably not quite as funny. I, maybe more cogent analysis if we're being honest. But the, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'll just do my best. I, I um, But yeah, thank you for having me. And yes, like you said, we'll talk about all those things. We are. Uh, just before I get started, though, I'm sure most of the people listening are familiar with you in the many, many platforms you on. Can you just run through like a quick, you, cut, you tweeted out last night, all the shows you were going to be on. Yeah. So maybe just letting people know where they can find your work. Well, you can watch uh, First Things First, which mm-hmm. many people are calling America's most beloved sports television show uh, from 3 to 4.30 right. on FS1. Uh, I recommend you watch it from three to four and then just toggle back and forth between my (laughs) show and NFL live, just just kind of rapid fire, uh, starting at four o'clock Eastern. And then you can watch what's right with Nick Wright, a podcast I do with my son, uh, from my wife's boutique in Harlem twice a week, uh, on YouTube, or you can download it. You can do all those things. Yeah. Okay. So you were here today to talk football. You were here today because... Well, because I, I I love your analysis, but also because you are a Chiefs fan. This hurts for me, too, because I have all year, really during the Patrick Mahomes era, um, have been the stop worrying about the Chiefs person. The Chiefs are going to be fine person. Stop on, like, Patrick Mahomes is the most underrated quarterback in football is a, is a bit I enjoy engaging in from time to time. But I do feel a little bit worried. Now, I'm not entirely worried after last night because of the landscape of the NFL generally. But as far as this loss, why they lost, let's start from the Chiefs side to begin, and then we'll get to the Eagles side of it. Um, I think the question that I want to pose to you is, you know, this felt a lot like week one, frankly, where it was so clearly the failings of the Chiefs wide receivers, the wide receiver core, that you you could really pin a good chunk of the loss on, you know, in sports TV, we always do the, like, did they lose or did they win? Which is a pretty silly framework, but I think it's pretty fair to attribute a lot of this to that. Um, I think at the beginning of the season, my feeling was it's fine. It will be fine. The wide receiver core wasn't great last year where I feel differently about it, Nick now for a few reasons. And this is what I want to get your thoughts on one. Sure. It's now been more than half of a season. I felt less nervous at the beginning of the year because it's a young group. I felt surely someone will develop chemistry with Mahomes or will progress or will get better over the, the season. And when I say get better, by the way, I'm not just talking about drops, although uh, the chiefs wide receiver core, like breaking records in terms of drops and have the most in the NFL. And uh, that should be surprising. I'm also talking about like the routes they run. I mean, there were just so many points in this game where you saw not again, it wasn't just drops. It was like Justin Watson, not running the corner with Patrick Mahomes was leading to what should have been an explosive game. People are like, why isn't the chiefs offense explosive? It's explosive, not explosive because the wide receivers don't run the right routes half the time. So that concerns me, the lack of development. And then the other thing, and this is something that gives me a lot of pain to say is uh, Travis Kelsey doesn't look dominant. He's still fantastic. He's still one of the greatest to ever do it. He still clearly absorbs the bulk of defensive game plan. And you certainly saw this in this, in that game. But I think what differentiates this Chiefs offense from last year was last year when the wide receivers struggled, Kelsey was still capable of completely taking over football games this year, I do wonder because of age, injuries, et cetera, if that's still the case. 
All right, so a lot of things there. First of all, I do the I I think there are two guys in the receiving core that either are getting better or will be better by the end of the year. The first one is rookie Rasheed Rice, who I think has like rookies obviously that makes sense will progress. He has gotten more involved. I thought he would have been more involved yesterday. So I think that is a a player that will be featured more. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think he probably is. No, as I, much I'm with you. Talent as anybody there. He has the most the juice, up, clearly. The, right. The other one is maybe a more polarizing opinion, which is I think they do not believe Kadarius Tony can stay healthy mm. for four or five consecutive games with consistent usage. And I think that they were spooked by the surgery right before the season when he got hurt, you know, a week into training camp and they have done their best. And last night was really one of the first times they tried to really use him, used him in the running game, used him as a punt returner because Hardman got hurt. I think he will be more featured more as the season progresses, particularly into the postseason. But where I, where I disagree with, and listen, everyone seems to believe some version of what you're saying and me disagreeing could mean that I'm just wrong. I will admit that. I would never admit that on the TV show when I just yelled at Broussard about this very topic for 90 minutes. But I will admit it to you, my friend Mina Kimes, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think last night the problem was the drops. I don't think last night the problem was the receivers. I think that the idea behind the Chiefs is we spent, we we had the best receiver in the league. We got rid of him, used those assets on defense. And that, by the way, has paid massive dividends, right? That was a tr the, on the defensive side of the ball. The bet they made was we can get away with it because we have a superhero at quarterback and the, as good of a weapon in, as there is in the world in Travis Kelsey. I would argue that neither of those guys have been that this year. I think Patrick Mahomes, I do not think the Chiefs offense works at the level they want it to work, if Patrick Mahomes is playing like, uh, he's probably right now, you know, third and fourth in MVP voting. I think the way this Chiefs team is built, he needs to be head and shoulders better than everyone in the league. And last night, they, they yes, the drops, they could have won the game if not for the drops, but they would have won the game if the two best players on the team didn't make uncharacteristic mistakes. They cannot overcome Travis Kelsey's fumble inside the 10, and they cannot overcome Patrick making a very un-Patrick-like pass inside the red zone. They just can't. And so I don't, I don't think it is, it is unfair or wrong to say what's going to fix the Chiefs is not all of a sudden Justin Watson and MVS playing better. It's the two generational, maybe best ever mm. in the history of their position guys cleaning shit up. You you made a lot of funny faces there, so I think you disagree with me. I agree with you when it pertains as it pertains to Kelsey. I think that this build of the Chiefs, to your point, is predicated on Travis Kelsey putting up at least 100 yards. He has to be dominant. He has to make not, you know, he's always going to, especially with the, these players around him, but he's always going to command uh, an, yep. an incredible amount of attention. He has to overcome that. He can't have the fumble. He can't have the drops, but not just that. He has to get yards after the catch in a way that he kind of has. The yards after year. the catch thing, I I think is a, like, I don't think that's going to be there this year the way it has been in the past. Yeah. But the like the fumble, he fumbles once a year, fumbled in the Cincinnati game last year when they were in a similar spot trying to go up two scores on this game. I'm but the So you disagree with me on the Mahomes. So, so the Mahomes thing, he had the interception last night that was bad that was on him and really yep. again it's not just the drops it you, when you turn the ball over in the red zone a couple of times and you know that, that you're playing a really good team you're probably going to lose like we, we we're going to get we're like complicating this and like getting into the nitty-gritty and like you know is this player good enough whatever if you do those two things and it's a really really good team you're probably not going to win that's really what this yep. came down to Mahomes <laughs> through some of the most outrageous passes I've seen from a quarterback this year. I mean, the forget the back-to-back -back deep ball, the, the MVS ball that was dropped, and then the final one to Watson. Both of those throws were like God Perfect. mode throws. Yes. The corner route to Watson uh, when the caught. Chiefs blitzed him. Yeah, that he actually caught. I mean, 
he totally was agree. Un- he had he made like really like one mistake in this right, game. Right. But so I guess so in and, and so this is where the maybe the disconnect is. So the everyone's talking about the Chiefs haven't scored a second half point in the last three games, right? Yeah. The the Dolphins game they won and they were dominating the Dolphins defensively throughout the game. I'm not that concerned about that. The Broncos game. The Broncos game. game. He was bad. They turned the ball over five times. He was sick. Yesterday, they turned the ball over twice, you know, once in the second half. The point that I am making is, right now, I had it it written down, so I'll just say it here because I don't want to get it wrong. Here are the full list of teams with more turnovers than Kansas City. Minnesota, Cleveland, Washington, and the Raiders. That's it. So Minnesota was turning the ball over a ton, stopped, and turned their season around even though they, their quarterback got hurt. Cleveland has had a disaster quarterback situation. Washington's quarterback just turns the ball over and gets sacked once every 10 plays, and the other plays he throws for 30 yards. And the Raiders benched Jimmy G. The, the, so that's why I, I actually think that's a good stat because I don't think that will continue. I think the Chiefs having a bad red zone offense is encouraging. Because I have, I, I don't think that will continue. So my point is, like, in a game like last, I can't say, come the playoffs, that the receivers aren't going to keep dropping the ball. They might. What I believe is come the playoffs, Mahomes doesn't make that mistake in the end zone. And if he doesn't, they win. Or if Kelsey yeah. doesn't fumble, they win. That's the it point just, I'm making. And I'm just saying it stinks that the um... – the bar is basically perfection. And I do think that it is because of this receiving group. Now, the defense, which was unbelievable, unbelievable in the first half, um, they actually, you know, the wide receiver group doesn't like lower, raises that bar, but the defense lowers it a little bit. Yes. Like when you watch this Chiefs team, you're not like, oh my God, Patrick Mahomes has to score 30 points. He didn't have to score 30 points last night. They do not have to um play lights out on offense in that way from a points perspective. They can win a game like the Dolphins game. That the, yeah, the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. they could never win that Dolphins game and until this year. It, it's just I mean that was an all time bad receiving performance. I, I really think it's worth stressing that. I understand your point about this is the way the team was built. The team was built poorly, man. I we're gonna talk about the Packers not poorly, but sorry, the offense was built poorly. We're going to talk about the Packers in a second later on when we talk a little bit about the Thanksgiving games. Um, you know, last week I expressed some concerns about how young that Packers receiver group, but watching them against the Chargers, admittedly terrible pass defense, the receivers are exciting. Dontavian Wicks, sure. Jaden Reed, uh, Romeo Dobbs, all three of those players, if they were on the Kansas City Chiefs, and these are not first round draft picks, by the way, would probably be wide receiver one frankly, uh, by the end of the year. And I really believe that. And in you didn't even defense. mention Christian Watson, who I know is not having a good year. Been up and down, yeah. The, but he, yeah. He has ceiling is there. But my point sure. is just they have chosen poorly. Uh, I, you know, know what? So, again, maybe I'm – maybe you can call me, you know, blinded by my fandom. I think Rasheed Rice is a good player. He could be I, good. He, yes. The Sky, the, the, the Sky Moore pick is bad pick. There's no way around it. Like, I, you know what I mean? It's yeah. bad pick. Um, And the the – the Hardman pick a few years ago was obviously, you know, they drafted him yeah. thinking Tyreek might be kicked out of the league. And so they thought they needed to replace the speed. Then Tyreek came back and he never developed. This is, here is something though that I have learned, I think, and maybe I'm, maybe the data doesn't back me up on this. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of teams other than Pittsburgh that have nailed it. I guess Pittsburgh and Minnesota are the two teams. I'm like, yep, they, they know, they know how to pick which wide receivers like Pittsburgh, you know, Minnesota drafted Dave. <laughs> And then drafted uh, Addison. Yeah, I like Flowers in Baltimore. I don't know, the, man. There's a lot of fun rookie wide receivers in the. Oh league. no, no, no! Of course, there's a lot of fun rookie wide receivers. I'm talking about over the span. I don't think Baltimore knows how to draft wide receivers. Oh, you're talking about like organizationally. I'm as saying opposed opposed to like, organizationally. Yeah, I think the only two organizations that seems like if they draft a receiver, know what they're doing are Pittsburgh and Minnesota recently. Again, maybe I'm wrong. Seattle, maybe. Uh, See, Seattle's is, obviously yeah. had some good ones, although, you know, JSN maybe hasn't been quite what people had hoped just yeah. yet. It is funny, right, for all the Mahomes-Brady comparisons that the organizations do seem to suffer from the same affliction uh, yeah. when it comes to picking these guys. Um, uh, let, let's flip to the Eagles' defense. I, I, we're kind of skipping the Chiefs' defense, which I was really excited to come on this podcast to talk about them after the first half, but that kind of ended up not, not being the narrative of the game, even though I thought that they played really well throughout a couple of mistakes um, Trent McDuffie, the, the best corner in football, is he? 
all around? He's fan. You know, I'm I'm a Huskies fan. I loved him in college. Um, he was an amazing dog. He I, has been. I, I thought he would be good. He's been even better than I. I mean, the physicality, the tackling, uh, the tackling. The pass rushing. It's a good yeah. cover. Like not maybe not like uh, eight plus co- cover, but so good around the line of scrimmage. That, I, I think he's awesome. I that think is good. I think he's a potential All Pro. That is a good transition to the Eagles, actually, because when he, I think it was his second sack off the blitz. And granted, like, because Steve Spagnolo, the pressures are so uh, relentless and differentiated, and you've got guys simming and creeping and flying over the field. McDuffie's a threat to blitz at any point, but sometimes he drops into coverage. It is a very perilous situation for a quarterback. That said, it was that second sack where I was like, dude, Jalen, like, how do you not? See this one was that the coming. forced fumble? Yeah, I think it was the forced fumble. Yeah, the there were and, 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 now bounce right back to Jalen, but never yeah, mind. It did. Right? Yes, you're covering. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It, you you saw at times a little bit of the same struggles you saw earlier in Jalen Hurts' career, where he struggled at times with the blitz, with bailing on clean pockets. Towards the end of the game, however, he goes on to make some exceptional plays with both his arms and his legs. But I, I do want to start with the Eagles offense because um, I feel like the Eagles fan base, they talk about their team like they're four and five instead of nine and one because of agree. the offense. Uh, why it, it doesn't feel right to them. Why do you think that is? Do you think there's any justification to it when you watch? Yeah, I, th- I think it's our fault, Mina. I think <laughs> it is the mine. sports media <laughs> industrial complex's fault that has almost done a BCS era college footballization of the NFL where it's like, yeah, to dominate. Yeah. Like, yeah, you won, but who'd you beat? And what are the style points? We're at Thanksgiving. They've lost one fucking game. Pretty good. <laughs> like, uh, I, the, it, it, you know, we are, we somehow our like media brethren, some, really value quarterback wins while totally discounting team yeah. wins. Like, you know, you know, what is it? You know, what's a team stat wins and the Eagles are good at it. Like I, here's where, and I know Eagles fans, you probably you know, aren't huge fans of mine that that's fine. I, I think they deserve massive credit. I think this, I think there is such a thing in the NFL as knowing how to win as as and I think there is some such a thing okay, as for yes. a quarterback such as Jalen, who I thought was objectively having a bad game. I thought and, and it kind of annoys yes, me that, the, was, that yeah. the narrative today is like, is he the league MVP? That's again that's a college put, footballization of the NFL where it's like best that. team quarterback Heisman. Sorry, sorry if I'm jumping you. I don't No, I don't no, no, no. Know. Put a pin in that MVP yeah. quarterback thing because I'm I'm yeah. gonna do some stuff on that later. Okay. Um, but I I do think it is tough if you're having that rough of a game to then rally. And the biggest yeah. completed play of the game was the pass to Devontae Smith. He, you know what I mean? He carries himself with such confidence, even when he's playing poorly. I do think it instills confidence in his team. And I think Philly, it, to, to have the team record they have over the last year and a half is super impressive. Now, the flip side is I was really surprised to see them kind of get pushed around on both sides of the ball by the Chiefs O-line and the Chiefs D-line. And yes, like that is maybe a little concerning, but the, the we can parse, you know, what what makes good players or whatever it is. I don't think I I'm not that interested in like and I know you maybe kill me for this. I'm not I don't know where the Eagles rank in any of the smart stats, I know that they are to me a very impressive operation and how they can be playing poorly and yeah. find a way to, you know, f- find a way to win that is done it nine out of 10 times this year. I think it's really impressive. I, what you said about like wins being a team stat, you know, I have obviously right behind me, you can see there's the wins are not a quarterback stat oh, banner. Oh, yeah. That, uh, yes, yeah, Lenny's flying it in his little biplane on the YouTube audience. By the way, well, I'll get to YouTube in a second, but um, there, there was a point at halftime when they got it, you know, within three. So many teams, I would say this is over. 
you're not this is you're not going to surmount this. But I truly believe, oh, okay, Philadelphia is in it because um, they not only I, I, I agree with everything you spoke to in terms of like the culture, the leadership, whatnot, yeah. the the recent history of winning. I think all of that matters. But they also have a lot of different answers on offense that they can always go to when things aren't working. Even if, God forbid, like there, there, there was a point in this game where they didn't run the Brotherly shove on third and one. And I was briefly really shook because, as you said, they had been getting pushed around at the line of scrimmage. It felt so antithetical to their identity. And then they come back out, you know, and, and they go, they, they're able to say, all right, we're going to run, you know, a draw here for Jalen or, and it's going to work and we're going to run the sweep with Swift and we're going to get, you know, Smith on the big play. Like they have so many counter punches for the things that defenses present to them and it's why they've been successful. So I, they also have superstars on both sides of the ball, guys who will make huge plays. Frankly, what the chiefs are lacking outside of Travis Kelsey, it's like, okay, AJ Brown's not having a big game in this one. Devontae Maybe Smith can go. Yes. We have Devonte Smith we are yep. going to be able to take advantage of a matchup there or a problem with the Chiefs coverage in the back end. So I, I it, this was a team win, both sides of the ball. I don't think the defense really did anything crazy at the end. Um, they played like a little bit more man in the second half, but, but to my eye, it was a combination of a few guys making big plays. Bayard, who's not been great, obviously had the interception. It was fantastic. The forced fumble from Roby. I mean, they were just... I mean, you almost had like one of the coolest plays ever by J uh, Jalen Carter uh, on this the, trying to. Uh, the only play. Eagles defensive thing that would be hmm, like, I don't want to say concerning, but something to monitor is I know everybody like it seems like a lot of people talk about this. The Chiefs, this Chiefs, excellent offensive line. The Chiefs have an excellent interior of the offensive line the guard center guard yes. and Juwan Taylor is, can be good. Like he kind of is very up and down and Donovan Smith is a guy they got for 3 million bucks. You know, who's, like, the tackles can be had and have gotten had all yeah. year. I was surprised. And some of it is Mahomes manipulating in the pocket, but I was surprised the Eagles didn't have more success rushing on the edge on Kansas City. I know their biggest strength is up the middle with Carter and Cox and, I, I, and Jordan Davis. I no, know. No, I agree. But I was surprised by that. It When it opened with Reddick um, at the very beginning winning yep. so early, I was like, okay, this is going to be a problem because I totally agree with you about the Chiefs offensive line. But then as the game went on. It was the only sack of the game. They, they weren't able to get a lot of pressure. Now, a lot of that is Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes movement. The yeah. touchdown, I just rewatched um, the first touchdown where he hits good. Watson his ability, I mean, Watson is like so late in his progression there and his ability to subtle little pocket movements to evade pressure, to buy the time, to find him. That is why Patrick Mahomes is the greatest uh, quarterback alive. I do, speaking of quarterbacks, so I do want to go back to Hertz for a second because yeah. um, I know I started by saying Chiefs fan or Eagles fans might be like a little bit too concerned about their offense. I will say this, and I, and I know I alluded to this, there has been some regression on the, for Jalen Hurts. Um, and I think that you can pin the offensive quote unquote struggles, the lack of dominance, shall we say, on a few things. I, I Eagles fans are so mad at their offensive coordinator, Brian Johnson. I don't think they were like, I mean, his, he was like trending in the first half. Oh, really? I don't think he, I, I think Shane Steichen, and I've talked about this a lot on my podcast, had a fantastic feel for matchups and sequencing. And I think sometimes that is lost, but this offense doesn't look radically different to me on like a play to play basis. I have noticed with Hertz, however, some struggles at times against pressure. You saw that in this game. And then, Nick, I do think um, the mobility thing is really a big factor. It's not just and, – and he made a huge, very impactful run in this game. I talked about the draw. But I think last year it really changed the way defenses played them in a way that's different this year. Right before we jumped on, I was looking at um, – NGS to see what kind of coverages Hertz was playing. So last year he barely played split safety coverages just 32% of the time. This year, that's amongst the lowest in the NFL because teams always had to put an extra safety in the box, which of course opened up those beautiful go balls down the right. sideline to AJ Brown. This year that is sorry, Lenny's barking. That's up to 42%. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he doesn't like this argument, but this year that he is facing split safety coverages way more often. Teams are not as afraid of the threat of his legs. 
it makes things difficult for the, you know, it, it changes everything. So I think that's one thing to keep an eye on. A hundred percent. And he's hurt. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, the, the, they showed the sleeve on his knee and, you know, and he's been hurt all year. And I am, I, I am of the belief that both teams we saw last night, uh, use their quarterbacks incorrectly in regards to risk really? in this, in this very simple way it on the, on the bell curve of like risk averse or, you know what I mean? Skydiving without a parachute, which I guess that's not skydiving, but you understand what I mean? The, the, the chiefs ran a quarterback sneak with Patrick Mahomes five years ago, his kneecap dislocated. Oh, yeah. And right, since yeah. then they just won't run it. Uh, they have not run a single one. The Eagles created an entire element of their offense based around the idea that 17 of the 22 guys on the football field are going to hit our quarterback from different angles. And we're going like, and there has to be some happy medium there. Mm -hmm. And I do think like that the Eagles have been a little reckless with the punishment they subject him to given the fact that he's injured i do think that and i do think that it is a little short-sighted for a team that obviously believes they're going to play 20 games this year and need him to be as close to his best as possible for the last one well that actually brings me to something that i meant to rant about at the beginning and I forgot, but you're talking about how the Chiefs don't sneak Mahomes on, you know, yes. third or fourth and short. Reminded me. Andy Reid, punting on your opponent's 39-yard line. You deserved to have that touchdown scored on you immediately. I was – I'm. It, the thing is, like, in a game like that – well, first, you're going against a team that, you know, uses all four downs – where your offense still isn't really clicking, you cannot cede those sorts of advantages to the opposing coach. You just can. I know he's been that guy. I know well, this is something he, they've done a lot in recent years. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, he's going to. Like, uh, I, the, here, the. Well, as a Chiefs fan, were you watching that? Were you not, like, just, screaming? I, I, or you honestly, just, you're so no, used so to it at this point? I'm used to it. And I just, the, here is the thing. And this is where I, get i don't want to say frustrated i get i think the us talking head folks the especially the i i you know i i consider you in this group i would like to consider myself in this group i don't know if others do but i think everyone considers you in this group of the like <laughs> forward thinking progressive smart football people um i think we need to do a maybe a slightly better job recognizing that we're yet to find the coach that does all the things we want him to do. Like it's there isn't like the it's like oh his like, name is Dan Campbell. Oh, oh well, it, maybe with the here's the thing. I'll believe that when we see Dan like if Dan Campbell keeps this up now that the Lions games are. Like one now they're playing high leverage games because I go ahead. That's what I love about Dan Campbell. Like so, so many chargers come to mind. So many coaches will do this. And then it's like, okay, well, our team is good. Maybe we shouldn't take risks anymore. We're playing in big games. I don't know about that. Oh. This dude has done it at the highest leverage moments thus far. Well, thus Granted, yes, not in the playoffs. Agreed, but the uh, but when I say the, I, the coach that does all the things we want, I'm not talking about the fourth down decisions. I mean the it, in so in, the in tell me if he's cleaned this up this year because maybe I'm wrong on it. But last year when we, the Lions were turning things around, and even when they were on that winning streak, a lot of his clock management, game management stuff was like, oh man. That was really rough, but he was still aggressive, like you're talking about, and this yeah. year he's been great about it. The point that I was kind of trying to, like, Belichick, for years, was the most, like, forward-thinking, progressive guy on a yeah. lot of nuances of rules, and yet also didn't do the fourth down stuff that we all thought he needed to. So the point that I'm kind of making is, like, Andy, Andy is maddening on the fourth down stuff flatly 
but almost all the other cool football stuff people have been asking guys to do, recognize the pass more pitch on the run, all these things, he's great at it. So until I find the coach that checks all the boxes, people thought McVay was going to do that. But McVay and all the announcers think McVay goes for it on fourth downs, but he doesn't. He's like cowardly on it. Shanahan, who's the greatest game designer ever, but you know what I mean? Butchers, clock management all the time. Like all of these coaches have a thing, in my opinion. We haven't found one who doesn't. I don't know who he is. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, no. I, I, I listen. Andy Reid is a great coach. You, you sound like someone who knows that they've got it good in a relationship, and you're not going to sweat the small stuff. And I, I respect that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I get it. I was Andy Reid is amazing. They didn't kick the field goal. I was worried they were going to kick the. Field I know goal. that one. I was like, oh god, he should I, actually I, run it more in short yardage instead of doing some of the tomfoolery that they get up to. But well, that, that wasn't now that game. that uh, can I that drives the, me and I know you want to talk about the other games. Uh, can I tell you that it's too late now, but the signing I have advocated for two years, the Chiefs to make, is Cam Newton. Just as a short yardage guy. Just as a short yardage fourth down goal line I guy. I don't know if Cam Newton would want to be that guy, but well, um... if there, I the I the idea behind it was, if there's any quarterback that it, he's not going to overshadow, it's Mahomes. The yeah. only thing he doesn't have is a ring. The Chiefs are fun, and they need him. They put. The god gosh darn belldozer back there. I know. In big games. Like it's it it's I was really so a, happy yesterday yeah. when they had the third and one and they just handed it off to Pacheco. I'm like, yes, can we can do that? For like set, my start, go ahead, they would sorry. bring in oh no, it's like how the Browns were or even when I guess the various teams that Jacoby Brissett's on, he's been that guy because he's so yeah. good at sneaks. And yeah. um, all right. Well, well, I, I, I picked the Chiefs and the Eagles to play in the Super Bowl before the season. Brave, I know, a rematch. Kind of feels like that still might be the case. I do have um, concerns. I, 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 both of these teams are imperfect, but it's an imperfect season across the league. I don't think any team is particularly dominant right now. So maybe one is going to play on Thanksgiving. Let's take a quick break. I think you probably know which team that is. It's the Commanders. Just kidding. It's not the Commanders. All right. Tickets to the game, merch, meals at iconic restaurants, stays at Caesars Palace, all this can be yours when you bet with Caesars Sportsbook. Win or lose, every bet earns reward credits, which you can redeem across the empire. Now, if you haven't started yet, register using code OMAHAFULL, and then place your first bet up to $1,250. If you win, great, you keep those winnings. But if you lose, you'll get your stake back as a bonus bet. Okay, uh, before we talk about the Thanksgiving games, we were talking so much about fourth down, I probably should have mentioned, if you're watching this on YouTube, you might already be seeing it, but I did recently make a video explaining why coaches go for it on fourth down, what goes into the models, how successful it's been lately. It's on my YouTube channel, which we just launched. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, go check it out. It's just look up my name, YouTube slash at Mina Kimes. We put episodes of the show twice a week, every week, although just once this week. Uh, and then I'm making original content. So please hit subscribe and check it out. All right. So that's my plug for YouTube. Uh, back to the games. The team I was talking about, the San Francisco 49ers, but they're playing last. And I think we should go in chronological order. Sure. Um, I alluded to the Packers, young wide receivers playing well. Now they're playing the Lions. The Lions are correctly favored. Um, to me, I, I like to approach this kind of from what would make this game interesting. I do not think the Lions will have difficulty moving the ball on the Packers defense. Uh, however, Nick, you could see a world in which did, uh, Green Bay does the same because uh, as good as this Lions team has been offensively, the defense, you certainly saw this on display last weekend against Chicago, started the season really strong has been struggling over the last few weeks, looked a little bit more like the Lions defense last yep. year. Since week six, 27th in EPA per play, struggled against both the pass and the run. They've been uh, particularly vulnerable against the play-action pass, 28th in EPA per play, worst yards per play in the NFL. And that's something that I think the Packers are increasingly doing well with Jordan Love. So for me, what would make this an interesting game is if we see – continue love continuing down the path that he's been on really now for about three weeks where he's still an imperfect quarterback, still occasional bouts of inaccuracy and misreads, but he is making like a few special throws a game and 
that might actually be enough to make this interesting to me. Okay, so if that happens, I will be highly concerned about Detroit. Hmm. Because I, I listen, I think Detroit has it's a little murkier now because the Eagles won last night, but I think they have a path to the one seat. And I think Detroit absolutely should be considered a Super Bowl contender. Not just like, oh, that's a good story. And not just like, I think that I they should. The Eagles have earned the right, in my opinion, to be the favorites in the conference. But I think the Niners, Cowboys, Lions all could make a different case to why they should be considered the second best team. If the Lions on a short week at home let Jordan Love cook them up, then I then I will feel differently about them. Like there's, and again, it's not to say Jordan Love can't play well. To your point, I thought he played well this week on the very popular yeah. Mahomes Mountain segment on First Things First on FS1 today. I moved him up. Uh, Wait, where we is put he? all our favorite, most now? popular segments right at four o'clock sharp to counter program NFL <laughs> Live to see him. Um, but uh, the and so he he was a guy who it looked like a month ago. It's like oh. The Packers are definitely going to be in the quarterback market this offseason, the draft or otherwise. And the last month, it's like, oh, maybe, maybe they can bring him back on that option they signed him to, whatever it is. But I just, if you're the Lions, like, this is the type of, we know your offense can be basically as good as anybody in football. Agreed. You don't need your defense to be elite. You, you, it's, it's kind of, you know, like the Chiefs used to be. <laughs> like, can the defense be average? And, can, you know, because the offense is going to cook. Uh, but if you let Jordan Love on a Thursday morning come in there and, and carve you up, you're, then your defense is not going to be average enough, in my opinion. I think that's completely fair, especially when you look around in the NFC. I agree with you that the Lions are Super Bowl contenders, but when you look at the, the actual powerhouses of the NFC, because the NFC is so top-heavy, right? You've got the Niners, the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Lions, and they're just and kind of it. like – and then it's a big, you know – I would say and drop that's it. to that next year. Yeah. Vikings, so, like Seahawks, and then yeah, we're all in the same yeah. kind of like feisty yeah. tier beyond that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that those those offenses will destroy your defense if you can't. Correct. And, and I again, I I have concerns. Um, now the Packers won't have Aaron Jones, who is hurt, and I think the lack. I mean, the, the Packers' run game has quietly been really, really bad this year, and that's been a really big problem for Love. I think because I just you thought it was going to be the thing that kind of carried him. Offensive line also has some issues, but these young wide receivers versus a Lions secondary that has been kind of banged up, missing players here and there. Um, that is something I. I'd just be a little bit concerned about in this game. Now, again, I, I, I was very flip on the other side of the ball. I don't think that Detroit should have too many problems. Jared Goff I've talked about this. He's not going to throw three picks again. Yeah, I mean, he and, might at some point, um, but not back to back weeks, not against the Packers. It was Never a weird game against Chicago because some of the picks weren't a couple of them weren't really his fault. One was tipped. Uh, one was like a, there was a defensive penalty that probably should have been called. But you definitely have seen a little bit of like, oh, old Jared Goff in terms yeah. of the struggles under pressure. I just don't think I would be surprised if that's a problem against this defense, especially given the areas in which this Detroit offense is so good. I mean, running the football, um, throwing over the middle of the field, the play action game. I just don't. This Packers defense to me doesn't really have answers for that. So I agree. I'm still I'm on Detroit, but this Detroit. Yeah, defense I like Detroit. Is I just think they have to notice. be at home the whole playoffs to have a real chance. That's another, I mean, again, Jared Goff. I, yeah. I don't want it to seem like I'm slandering him when I talk about his struggles under pressure. He's not going to go to the with, link against with the that weather, defense and win. But, yeah. He's not. He's just, he's just he's not. Just, like, but the, just, and, and I mean, they, the, they, they could run the table. I mean, they're going to be favored in every game they play the rest of the week except for the Dallas game. The, and so, I, yeah. and they have a path. They have a viable path with one seed. And I'm not just saying that because I bet it. No, but go ahead. I have trouble picking against the Lions in Detroit, and yeah. it's entirely because of the quarterback and the the way he plays. I think this offense in that in that uh, you know field can put up points on anyone. But I totally agree. Take him out. I don't know. Um, I'd like to see Sam Laporta. He had a kind of a tough one. I'd like to see him bounce back because again, this Detroit or Green Bay defense cannot defend tight ends. But I don't know. Maybe they'll surprise us with some pressure. We'll see. I mean, but you know. With, 
they still have a, some decent pass rushers. And Kenny Clark, I thought, looked pretty good against the Chargers as well. All right. This is the dud. The I, I kind of like the dud game in the – I mean, maybe people will say that the Seahawks Niners – Geno Smith looks like he's going to play, so that helps a lot. I prefer, like, the afternoon game to be kind of the worst one on my Thanksgiving because that's usually when I'm kind of more likely to be locked in on dinner. Commanders Cowboys – I feel like a month ago, this game had a little bit of shine on it. Yeah, not but anymore. But directionally, this commander's defense, oh my God. Did you watch them get yeah. harped up by Tommy no, DeVito? By, by, yeah, by my Goodfellas guy, of course. And I watched for the fourth time this year, uh, Sam Howell combined for at uh, least seven sacks or interceptions. He like, is like... Two steps forward, two steps back all year long. He has been sacked or picked 63 times. 63, Mina. That is insane. I like that's got to be. I bet that is. How many times we, I'm sure we could look this up. Has Patrick Mahomes been sacked or intercepted in the last three years? I bet it's around that number. Yeah. Like, (laughs) I mean, it's so. It is crazy he's leading the league in passing yards. I guess maybe a testament to be enemy, but this just feels like a game that Micah Parsons is going to power bomb him to the center of the earth multiple times. Um, and it feels like another game the Cowboys win by 20 points and nobody cares. Like the we, Cowboys are in this midst of like yeah. can't win situations where I if know. they lose, it's a five alarm fire. If they win close, we were like, what's wrong I mean, with look them? Look at the Cowboys. If they schedule. blow a team out, they're like, ah, you always blow out teams. Who cares? Like I just, the Cowboys, the, you know, the, they play a real team in Seattle next Thursday, and then they play the Eagles again. But this game, yeah, I mean, okay. I don't, so the Cowboys as much time on as you want. But. Well, the Cowboys, the end of the schedule is brutal: Eagles, brutal. Bills, Dolphins, Lions. The Lions game is in Dallas, but it's in a you know that'll be fine for Detroit. Um, yeah, it's funny because I was pulling quarterback splits because I'm I, so I was thinking about the MVP thing, which you know what I'm probably gonna do a video on that on my YouTube. Check it out, YouTube. I mean, it guys. And because I was just trying to see how, who have been the dominant quarterbacks is, you know, like, how can we parse out? Because it doesn't feel like a season where any quarterback has particularly dominated, which is, I think, opens the door for other candidates. And Dak leads in like everything. Like, yes. Dak, Dak versus man. Because the, the Washington, what really struck me watching the Giants game was how much freaking man coverage they played. I posted a, a screenshot of they were playing cover one. And I don't know who screwed up off of my, I'm, I can't remember which player. I think it might've been Kendall Fuller or something, but Isaiah Hodgins was being covered by three guys at the middle of the field. And I think it was uh, Slayton who was running free or so it was like the easiest uh, throw Tommy DeVito will ever throw in the entire NFL. So anyways, they were playing an inexplicable amount of man coverage. Dak Prescott has a 90 QBR versus man coverage first in the NFL. His QBR when pressured is first in the NFL. His QBR when blitzed is first in the NFL. His QBR on third down is first in the NFL and so on and so on and so on. He's been awesome. The problem is though, it does feel like a lot of that has been bolstered by, and I'm the biggest world's, I'm a huge Dak apologist. And he has had- Bolstered by the bad teams. The bad teams. Although again, against the Jets defense, when they were killing guys, he was awesome too. And he was awesome against the Eagles who they lost the game. He was, he, but he was also awesome in that game. So, I, 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 yeah, it's unfair to say it's only been against the bad teams. He's been really, really good this year. Yeah. Um, listen, aside from the Niners game, he has done everything everyone asked him to do this year. Um, and so I, listen, I think as Mina, Mina left, but she's back now. Um, I can, I, you mentioned the MVP situation. Yeah. Can I ask you an MVP question? You can ask me an MVP question. I'm going to dig into it more detail later. later. Okay. Because I'm of the belief that in a year like this, if we're going to ever break the trend of it's just quarterbacks, this would be the year for it. I agree. Why is the MVP of the NFL not Miles Garrett? Uh, well, you mean if, if once you accept that it doesn't have to be a quarterback, as you're saying. Um, I think Miles Garrett and Tyree Kill are the two players that have yeah. a legitimate case this year. I agree. I th- and if, I would if, like, yeah. if no quarterback jumps off the page and it's like, we're going to give it to, you know, Hurts, like any of these, like the, 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 CJ Stroud to me has a really compelling, interesting argument. 
Um, people are the, the MVP thing is in such shambles. There have been two new cycles of is Brock Purdy the MVP, which was sandwiched around at is Brock Purdy going to be benched for Sam Darnold news cycle, which is all, as insane as it's gotten. In that case, maybe the guy who has 13 sacks for and leapt over the line to block a field goal for a team that's seven and three because of the defense, or to your point, Tyreek, who has been, except for with Trent McDuffie on him, the most uncoverable player in the NFL. Listen, subscribe to Amina Kimes at YouTube yeah, for a, we're going to be a yeah, longer explanation, a longer dive yeah. into this. Um, awesome. Just one more thing about Washington before we move to yeah. the Brock Purdy's. Um, I think Ron Rivera survives the season. Yeah. I don't think. Oh, he, survives the season. Yeah, I'm talking because like it, this game, it, let's say, like it feels like one where, let's say, Dallas blows them out, and let's say Micah Parsons, you know, devours Sam oh. Howell in a single bite. You know, fire a guy on Thanksgiving feels like seems mean. It's happened before. Um, I, I just feels like okay, maybe. I mean, I think everyone I know knows he's, he's getting fired. He's not going to be the coach next year. Yeah. I shouldn't say everyone knows, but it seems like it's that's the conventional yeah. wisdom. Uh, I would have, yeah, maybe, maybe the answer is they decided they were going to fire him when Tommy DeVito cooked him up, but you couldn't because they're on a short week. Right, right? going into the Thursday. that would make more yeah. sense, like. Losing that game is way worse than if the Cowboys beat you 40 to 3. Losing that game to the Giants was an abomination. Commanders are in a really bad spot because, like, when I look at the roster, there's still decent players, but there's just such massive question marks at all, so many of the big positions now. With the they traded away both their edge rushers, yeah. the secondary is, I mean, the safeties are good, but the corners are a problem. The wide receivers are talented, but they're not getting the ball because quarterback is so inconsistent. Yeah. I, it's just. I like Brian Robinson, but that's tricky. probably the least He's important position in the league. I mean, how, like, how was had these like really good. I thought he played well against Seattle. He's had good games, but it's just the sack yeah. thing is, is really Impossible. rough. It's, yep. it's, it's a non, it makes your offense non-functional unless he can fix that. In the, which is the precedent is tough. All right. Let's finish with Seahawks Niners. Yep. Your team. Okay, it seems like Geno Smith's playing. If Geno Smith's not playing, I'm yes. I, I'll watch. Yes. But it will, yeah, I I the only thing. So I was actually at Seahawks Rams this uh, this weekend. Oh. It was not fun. I mean, it was fun, but it was not fun. And I actually appreciated that the fan base got to see the Drew Lock offense because if yeah. anyone. I, we're Anybody not, advocating we're not, for that doesn't know what they're talking about. Yes, Give me we're a not break. doing that. We're not doing that. I think um, I, I am she, worried about Seattle, though, Mina. You should be. Have you, you looked at their schedule? It's insane. That's what I mean. That's, they play the they, Niners twice. Twice in the next three the, weeks. Um, this they is had a, to win that game. The well, I mean, the thing is, I don't know. If they had to because I think they could. I, I think eight and nine might get you the last yeah. playoff spot in the NFC. Um, like I think they might be okay no matter what. I'm also really, I'm cur- I want to see how Brock Purdy does at night at Lumen Field on a short week. Like I do want to see that. What you you're laughing at me? You think that's dumb? I, I it Matt, it's Kyle Shanahan versus the Seahawks defense. I've seen this movie so many times. I mean, it's Purdy just, carved him up last year, obviously in the playoff game. You can give it's him credit. so hard for me to imagine a world in which this Seahawks defense, which is vastly improved versus the run and that the Niners run, you know, rushing attack has been kind of up and down where suddenly Kyle Shanahan doesn't kill them the same with the same concepts that he always does, where he doesn't make mincemeat of the linebacker position, which is a weakness for them in coverage. I, I, the only way in which I think this works out for Seattle is if they go somehow toe to toe with them because I do think the offense still has a very high ceiling. The Niners defense is interesting though, right? Because we're coming off a game in which they look completely cured and everything was all better against yep. Tampa. And then the Fred Warner looked like the best player, you know, linebacker in the world again. And the pass rush looked uh, amazing, but they did lose their starting safety. Tal- I was Tal- say, Vanga, well, an injury. Yeah, he's awesome. And they're still up a little bit of a question mark. I think in the secondary outside of ward, and they are, you know, a bye week removed from a real struggle. Uh, three weeks of bad defense. So for me in this one, for this to be competitive, 
the Seahawks offense have to go toe to toe with them. I mean, the Niners. This is, we saw with against Tampa. Everybody was like, the Niners are back. The Niners are an, a buzzsaw if they have a lead. This is. I mean, we just they get they well, jumped that, out to right. a lead and it was over. If I mean, that happens, this will be over too. I don't know correct. what to say. That's what was so frustrating to me about the conversation after the last Niners game was. It was like or the last two Niners games, like, I want to be clear, Purdy does deserve an element of credit for being a part of them getting leads. But everyone, no no one doubts that the Niners, in a game played on their terms, can look like the most dominant offense in the league. Everybody knows it. And we've seen it with different quarterbacks under different circumstances. We know it. That which is why maybe this is just me, you know, saying what I want to happen. But I would like to see. I, I'm not, and I'm not even saying I want to see Brock fail in this circumstance. But I would like to see the Seahawks have a second half lead and see if they because with the and see if he can do better than he did in the those in during that three game losing streak. Like that is going to be the over. And by the way. That, while it is in something of an indictment on Brock, this whole Shanahan, you know, is what, like 3-29 and 29 when trailing by three points or more in the fourth quarter, whatever that stat is, is bananas. And so, and, the, and, so the, and that obviously is not just Purdy. In fact, the vast majority of it is not Purdy. So I, but yes, we know if this game is 10 nothing after the first quarter, we know, like, you can, you can turn it off. I'm not telling people to turn it off, but you can turn it. I don't know what network it's on, but you can turn it off. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. And I want to say, like, I thought I've, I, my, I, I've said this right in my podcast with Greg Rosenthal, like, and we, we were both talking about, like, you know, Purdy didn't play poorly during the, the three game streak. He didn't play, he, he had a few bad turnovers, but it's not like what, what I mean was, it's not like he was significantly worse than he was during the winning streak. He just had turnovers. He's kind of been the same guy um, throughout the season, which has been, for the most part, you know, a contributor to a, a dominant offense. Last week, I thought, you know, he, I mean, he made the throw to Ayuk was tremendous. That was one of the best throws I've seen him make down the sideline. And he is capable of throws, I mentioned this before, that Jimmy Garoppolo was not capable of That's that correct. elevate the offense and, and also making plays with his legs. And I think, um, yeah, that's a huge – that makes this – that coupled with the fact – I mean, last week against Tampa, the Monstars, we call them, Ayuk, Kittle, Debo, yeah, I CMC. Avengers. I mean, they they – they he – I think – I don't think any of them dropped a pass or something. They're, the numbers were insane. All three of them went freaking nuclear. Like, they're, un, they're a, a machine. They're a machine. They're, when right. When healthy. they are – when they're fully healthy, I mean, that – I mean, the only team, the only game they've lost with all of their guys since they got Christian McCaffrey was the first one, was the one to the Chiefs. Um, and the that's the only, and that was Jimmy Garoppolo playing quarterback, obviously. It's the only game they've lost. I just, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I think that, I think that this Niners team can get got in the postseason by any of the other of those top NFC right. contenders. And I really do want to see what the defense looks like without Hufanga. I don't know if we're going to yeah. get to see that so much this week. We'll see, but I, that's what I want to see. Well, that's, I mean, this, this that's the challenge for Seattle is, do you can you buy enough time against this pass rush, which looked amazing against Tampa, um, to open up the downfield passing? Because you have the horses, I think, to yeah. exploit this Niners secondary. Jair Brown came in. He's the rookie safety for Hufanga. He made a big play in that game. But, you know, he lacks, this is a challenging group of receivers. So, you you saw this last year for Gino. He actually played good in the first half of the wild card game, but ultimately the did the discrepancy in the trenches was too much for them to overcome. And my feeling is that's probably going to be the case again. Uh yeah. Pass Pro has been really up and down, but that's you know, that's kind of the ball game for them. That and not falling behind, because if you fall behind more than any other team in the NFL. I think it's over against the San Francisco team. By the way, they play the Eagles and the, the Ravens before this year is over. So we will learn more about 100%. them. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. The, the, and I'm super excited. I'm, I'm almost more excited to see them play the Ravens than the Eagles. 
Uh, yeah. And Living. so the I think that'll be a exciting matchup. I, I'm also excited to see, I know we're going to talk about today, what the Ravens look like post Mark Andrews. I was just going to say that's concerning to me. I haven't re- – like that – I think we're so excited about the fact that Lamar has wide receivers whose names we all know that we forget – Mark Andrews does so much for them, not just in terms of his presence on the field, formationally, from a personnel perspective, the way he dictates matchups, all of it. It's it's a big, it's a big, it's a huge, injury. big, a huge big loss. injury. All right. Well, Nick, um, I'm gonna. Thank you. One, yeah, oh. I, I, no, no. I was gonna say, I, I'm glad that you showed up despite the Chiefs losing. I would never not. You know, I, I would keep my commitment. Um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for inviting me on. Please tell your NFL Live family that I say hi. I really, really, I don't know any, I don't, I've never met in person anyone on that show but you, but I like really? all of them. You, never in person, any of them. But I uh, I wish we weren't on at the same time as you guys. I have uh, one question but, for you before I let yeah. you go, because you are, you, you're you known for takes a little bit, you yeah. know? So Great You're, takes. Ta- you're a takesman. Um, yeah. You mentioned Thanksgiving. Do you so I posted a take that I didn't think was that I guess I did know that it was going to make people a little bit spicy, which I said key lime was just better than all other thanks all the Thanksgiving pies because I saw some Thanksgiving pie rankings floating around. Anyways, inspired a little bit of a discourse. Do you have any hot takes about Thanksgiving food? Uh, my hottest the I'm gonna it would be a it would be a rude answer but since you have asked it i will give it my (laughs) hottest take about thanksgiving foods is um it is the worst thing we in sports media do which is Is, part of our thanksgiving shows is like hey wait are you a stuffing or dressing pumpkin or sweet potato Uh, i mean like are you more of the sides you know you know what is an overrated meat turkey nobody wants turkey i think i think it is the most cliche, terrible content imaginable. So I won't engage in it, Mina Kimes. But thank wow, you your for your hottest take is that my question sucks. <laughs> from I, the listen, from the LeBron guy, really bro, oh, well, coming yeah, at that, me over topic way, selection. That take aging like fine wine, much like LeBron James. Mina, thank you so much. Congrats on your expanding family and all your success in the podcast. See you.